Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. In today's video, we're talking about how you can make change happen in your life right now based on your 16 personalities type. And the truth is all 16 personalities types have their struggles, problems, issues that keep them from achieving positive, realistic, and progressive change in their life. And based on this video, you're gonna find that you maybe fall into one or two or three of these kinds of patterns and that you have certain issues that you need to work through in order to become better at managing the process of change. Now, if you're an introvert, perhaps you found that, yeah, maybe you spend a little bit too long thinking about things, right? Yes, so maybe you took a long time thinking about something and then when you were ready to do it, the opportunity had gone away. The other person had lost interest. The job that you wanted to apply for was already filled, you know. As an introvert, it can happen a lot that you're too slow to act on and jump on new opportunities. And so, as an introvert, it's very important that you pair and find ways to take realistic and direct action. It's important whenever you have an idea, whenever you have a thought, whenever you find yourself wondering about whether you should go for a new job or whether you should, you know, go for a relationship with that kind of a person or whether you should go and take up that hobby, that you try to find some small action, some small thing that you can do to see if that really is the case, right? So if you find yourself thinking about asking somebody out, go and strike up a conversation with them. Say hi, ask them how they're doing and ask some things about them, who they are. Perhaps you'll find out something that can help you in the process. If you're thinking of applying for a job, why not reach out to the HR administrator and ask them some questions. If you find yourself wondering about the salary, the position, the work, why not just call them and ask them how they're doing or send them an email on LinkedIn. If you're thinking about traveling to another country, why not just go and try research some apartments and find some people in the area and find some things to make the idea seem a little bit more close. If you're an intuitive, the tip I can recommend to you is quite simple. Find something small and specific. Because the truth is, intuitives often get lost in the generals, in the broad, symbolical, abstract level of a decision or a new idea. A lot of the time, intuitives can't even put words to the thoughts that they're having. Many intuitives find themselves in a situation where they feel like something should be different. I need to do something new. I need to go and do so, uh, go somewhere else. I need to start up a new hobby, a new project, but I don't know what. And when you're an intuitive, it's very easy to get lost in this general abstract space because the truth is it feels safe. But what I want to tell you, whenever you have that feeling, whenever you feel like something should be a little bit different, think of some specific thing that you can try right here, right now. Some close at hand, simple, straightforward thing that you could try out. If you've gotten a question recently about starting up a new hobby, if you heard about the new organization that started in your area, if you heard about something that's happening close to you, you know, why not go try that out? Because a lot of the time, learning to turn your ideas into specific, concrete, simple forms of action is key for you for success as an intuitive. And as a thinking type, something that you might want to think about is for every single plan that you come up with, every single strategy you devise, every single tool you master, every single technique you figure out, you know, for every single thing you learn to do, why not take a second to just reflect on your feelings about that, right? If you manage to achieve a promotion at work, great, how did that make you feel? If you find yourself mastering a new skill, think about, do you, do you, did you enjoy doing it? Did you have fun? Was it nice for you? What did you like about it? What did you dislike about it? If you find yourself, you know, um, working hard at the problem, how does that feel right now? Like, does that make you, does not knowing how to answer the problem or solve the issue make or cause you any emotional problems? Does it make you anxious? Does it make you feel bad in any way? Just taking a second to acknowledge that feelings are there are key to finding the right piece of action, the right strategy to take moving forward. Emotions are meant to guide motion. That means a lot of the time thinking types get stuck in a detached space where they're so focused on something or on nothing at all. But not feeling your emotions can often lead to 
one, either you overestimate yourself, you go and start up a project and you don't even think about your needs or your emotions and then you crash, or two, you never get started in the first place because without those emotions, you're not going to realize how important it is to act, how much your life could improve if you acted and how much better things could get if you just got started on it, right? And if you're a judging type, my piece of advice is quite simple. Think of something that... And if you're a judging type, the advice that I would give you is go and ask other people for feedback. Because the truth is, judging types, they're great at thinking of something, choosing an option, narrowing down, finding one thing to go for. But a lot of the time, judging types tend to suck at considering other people's opinions and getting other people's feedback. So what you can do as a judging type is here, go and run a poll on other people. Hey, I've been thinking of doing this. What do you think about it? Hey, I've been having this idea. I have this plan. How could I best implement that, right? So a lot of the time, working with your environment, working with what you got around you, talking to people around you is your key to getting your goals achieved. So a lot of the time, what keeps judging types from achieving the many goals that they often have to have is their inability to consider in the situation, what are my available resources, what are my networks, what are my friends, who are they, and what can they do to help me in this process and in this goal. Because the truth is, you don't have to do everything on your own. Now, if you're an extrovert, a lot of the time, extroverts tend to be good at starting up things, you know, taking action, going out, doing something, trying something out, going to a certain place. But a lot of the time, what I find is, extroverts don't spend a lot of time reflecting on why they did it. How did they enjoy it? What did they think about it? How could they have done it better? What were some issues or obstacles they ran into? A lot of the time, their focus is on constant movement, you know, this constant feeling of going forward, next, 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 right? And the idea of constantly wanting things to be done as fast as possible can keep you stuck in a cycle where you're doing unnecessary things that you think feel productive, feel fruitful, but actually they're not, right? So it's very important to identify when you're just acting, when you're just reckless, when you're rushed, rash, when you're just rushing through something so that you can adjust your course and move more in the right direction. And if you're a sensing type, a lot of the time what I see happen with sensing types is they are not really bold enough to dream big enough, right? Because a lot of the time, sensing types get stuck in this, what's practical, what's possible, what's immediately available. And so what I see with sensing types is, you know, they just get used to things because they've always had it, because it's always been around, because it's simple, because it's neat, because it's worked in the past, you know, they'll just stick with it, right? And so it makes it hard to achieve change in your life. How can you achieve change in your life if you're not ready to think outside the box, if you're not ready to, you know, encounter and confront feelings that you have about, you know, something, you know, because probably you have something inside of you, right? Everyone has something inside of them, something that they've been thinking about, something that goes deeper than what they're doing in the here and now, right? And so you got to think about what is that something for you? What is some kind of feeling that you've been having lately? Some kind of struggle that you've been thinking about, some kind of question you've been wondering about, and what can you do to become more aware of and to spend more time thinking about those things. As a feeling type, a lot of the time it's easy for feeling types to get stuck on, well, their feelings. And what I see is a lot of the time feeling types spend time, you know, recognizing, oh, this is what I care about. This is what I like. These are my values. This is what's important to me. Or they spend a lot of time thinking, what are my values? What is important to me? What do I care about? What do I feel? Right? But they get stuck in this stage. And a lot of the time, knowing what you feel is great. But if you're not capable of thinking of some practical step-by-step -step approach you can do to achieve it, how are you going to get it done? A lot of the time, it's not just about having the right idealism, but it's about being competent enough to get your needs met. If you have a certain need, if you have a certain value, what is the most logical, what is the most strategic way for you to achieve and have that kind of a life? And here, a lot of the time, the answer is build new competences. That means learn new skills or start up projects or write action plans or go and look at what other people are doing to achieve these things. Learn from experts. Think about and consider, you know, 
strategies and people that have been successful in their methods. And then think about, you know, how you can achieve and use their wisdom and insight in your own way, in your own life to achieve your own result. If you're a perceiving type, perceiving types tend to be great at the process of brainstorming, thinking of options, thinking of what to do next, thinking of different things they could do. And so it can be that you don't get started on change because you have so many changes that you see. You see so many things you could do, so many different routes you could go down. And now you don't do anything at all. And here the question is, what do you do to really narrow down? How do you manage to go from the many to the one? Like a lot of the time, what you don't realize is, well, you know, you can see life unfolding in parallel dimensions. Life is always converging in one singular point, right? Which means that, you know, what happens is always going to happen, right? Which means that things follow a linear sequence, right? And so a lot of the time, the question is, what can you do in order to straighten out and find and prioritize all those things that you see? If you think, oh yeah, I could watch that video, or I could watch that video, or I could watch that video. Well, add them all to your watch list and then arrange them and then try to watch them one at a time, right? And then Working like that, finding plans, putting things in a priority box, you know, setting things in order, setting things in a structure is key to achieving your goals. And now a lot of perceiving types resist structure. They feel it's wrong they feel it's not going to, they don't like it. It's not how they roll, right? But here, what you can think about is this. You can always change up the structure later, right? If you've gotten a structure down, if you've gotten a way to prioritize, if you thought of a way to straighten things out and, prior and set a plan for something and you don't like it, you can always get rid of the plan. The truth is the plan is only there to facilitate action. It's not meant to be an absolute. So with all that in mind, this is how the 16 personalities can achieve more change in their life. And so using these tips, I hope that you're going to create more positive change in your life, improve things, make things better for yourself and make a change. And perhaps you can do that right here, right now. Think of something you could do right here, right now, based on what I just said, in order to get a little bit closer to that big change that you've been thinking about. Whether it's that new job, that new partner, that new friend, you know, that new hobby, just think about how you can start it right here, right now.